Cell number eight by Sunbird Riding Shotgun. Epilogue. Two years. It was almost two years to the day after he last saw Nathan Ford that Elliot checked the address, scribbled on a scrap of paper, paid the cab driver, and climbed out of the cab. He shouldered his black duffel that held what was left of his worldly possessions without flinching despite the still healing wounds that peppered his body. The war was over, even if he hadn't been in the actual final fight. He'd done what he could, fought hard, helped the rebels press toward the liberation, protected the people caught between, and paid more than his fair pound of flesh for the cause. It had been worth it. Somewhere out there in the blood and carnage and sweat and war, somewhere out there he'd saved a life instead of ending it, made a difference, found what he was looking for. Even if he hadn't known what he was looking for before and didn't know what he'd found now, but he knew that somewhere out there he'd figure out where his road would take him next. Where it should have taken him a long time ago. He more limped than walked up the long pathway across the huge yard, forcing himself to put one foot in front of the other. He'd come straight here from the war zone, not slowing down until he was mounting the front porch steps. He was on his last legs, but he hoped he could soon lay down and rest for a while. He knocked on the front door and waited, leaning against the side of the doorframe and trying not to think about what would happen if he got turned away. He wouldn't be turned away. He really hoped he wouldn't. A pretty young woman in her mid-twenties answered the door with a smile, her eyebrows furrowing at the sight of him. She looked a long moment, then slowly the smile on her face widened. Ellie! Hey, Joey, Elliot said weakly. I, uh, I'm home. He shifted his weight uneasily, trying to find the least painful position to stand in and hide his discomfort and worry. Joey turned away, and Elliot let out a slow sigh. So she was still turning him away. Then she bent down to pick something up from behind her. When she turned back, she was holding a small toddler who'd been hiding behind her legs. The boy looked toward Elliot with wide blue eyes just like his mother's, and Joey pushed open the screen door, holding the boy out toward Elliot. Big brother, I'd like you to meet your nephew, Elliot. Two years to the day from when he'd parted ways with a man named Elliot Spencer, Nate returned home from work to find a package waiting for him with the day's mail. It had a handwritten return address, but no indication to who it was that actually sent it. He was trying to consider if he should even take it in the house or call IYS in case a mark had thought to take a payback when he glanced at the return address. Zagreb, P.O. Box 824. Nate knew when he recognized the handwriting from now. He took the mail and package inside, greeting Maggie and Sam with a kiss and a hug, chatting a few moments before finding his way up the stairs to his study. He sat the bills on his desk and slowly, carefully opened the package. Inside was a small magnetic travel chessboard with a single slip of paper with three simple words. White moves first. E.S. Nate spent two days trying to decide if he'd do just that. It had been two years without any sort of contact. It had been two years since they'd made the clear decision not to be friends. But this wasn't friends. This was chess by mail. He was staring at the chess set when Sam toddled in and held up his arms in the usual clear sign he wanted to be picked up. Nate leaned over, pulling the boy up and setting him in his lap. Sam reached out a small hand toward the chess set. We'll see. Nate picked up the white knight and put it in Sam's hand. It's called a knight. It moves in L shapes, three in a straight line, then two left or right. Sam looked at the piece and then started babbling to himself about the horses and the knight's adventures, clearly uninterested in the mechanics of a chess game. That's all right, Nate muttered. You're still a little young for chess. Nate looked back toward the chessboard, thinking, smiling softly. Hey, Sam, you're probably not going to understand this, but I want you to know. Somewhere out there, you've got a big brother named Elliot, running around in a dangerous world. He's a criminal, and maybe a bad guy, but there's a village in Croatia that's still standing because he helped the people learn to defend themselves. There's a woman somewhere out in the world who survived to adulthood because your big brother was hers. Two years ago, it was the reason I came home to you. He saved my life. Sam was looking at Nate, wide-eyed and in awe. I gonna meet my brother? Sam asked. Nate sighed, moving the other night for his first move. In a perfect world, you would. 
Then we knew in a perfect world, Elliot Spencer would be whoever he had been born as, would have grown up in a safe home, wouldn't have become a hitter, would be married to his childhood sweetheart, and would never have spent two weeks in some cell outside of Cairo. In a perfect world, Nate wouldn't have either. But Nate looked down at his son and grinned. But when you're older and I teach you how to play chess, you can play it with him. Sam nodded solemnly before moving back to playing with his little knight, snatching another piece from the board. Later, after going out and sending a letter with his own first move to the return address, Nate was walking back up to his study when he heard laughter coming from the living room. He leaned against the doorway, watching as the little boy played with his horses and army men, playing out a miniature war, starring his favorite action figure who was leading the toys to defend their homes. He had just turned around, heading back upstairs to go back to work, when he heard Sam speak with the village toys one more time. Thanks, Elliot, you saved us! He paused on the stairs and glanced upwards, lips moving to repeat the prayer he'd uttered two years ago. Protect my sons. End of cell number eight. If you enjoyed this recording or the content, please feel free to check out the link in the description or check the rest of this channel for more audiobooks. Thank you for listening.